Good evening, this is Kuro. Got a ranked game in my Akatsuki. Going over the matchmaking, the enemy team has Ganizanao, Double Sinop, New Orleans, Shores, Shiratsuyu, and Haida. Specifically pulling this game to discuss how to, um, one, fight Haidas, and two, proper positioning for a torpedo boat. So, right out of the gate, I'm going to come down here to ACAP. It's only two DDs in the matchmaking. Um, so typically your best bet is to split them off and one DD scout each flank. These are typically tiny maps uh, and the quicker you get vision for your team, you know, the you got a lot more advent advantages over the enemy team if you can get those early scouts and let your team kind of readjust to um, where the enemy is sailing their ships. So take note, I'm not using speed boost, anything like that. I do have a Fiji, a hood and a Synop kind of pushing in my position. And in my opinion, it's, it's better for me to maintain some, you know, some close proximity to them. So they, they can have a reasonable chance at, um, at helping me with a destroyer fight and specifically I'm doing that because there is a hide in in the matchmaking and they are one of the most difficult destroyers for other destroyers to to deal with So once I get up to the area where I'm expecting that I could run into the enemy at any time, I go ahead, I pop my engine boost, and I am I know that there could be a Haida up here, so I'm trying to use this island to sneak inside the Haida spotting range so I don't end up in the situation where, like right here, I am just, you know, out in the open without the Haida spotted. He ends up getting lit, and we got, you know, the gunfight going on. You already see shots from my allies coming in. And the Haida ends up taking a pretty good hit there. Now, the Haida, he doesn't have anybody here spotting for him, so I'm just kiting away. I'm disengaging, and the reason for that, the Haida smoke... It gives him so many tactical options as far as, you know, bounding in and out of smoke with the render delay or with the, um, um, there's a two second delay built into the game. So whenever you are spotted, you will always remain t spotted for two seconds longer than you, you previously, uh, or then from the moment that you were undetected. So right here you can see Again, the strength of the Haida, you know, on display. This Haida, he's got a Shores overwatching him. I can't push him, even though I have a Fiji right here. So I, I'm just going to kite away. And what I'm looking to do here, I'm look where I'm sailing. I'm sailing right back into my support. I'm closing distance with the Synop. The Fiji's staying about the same. And I'm, I'm closing distance with the Hood. I'm watching his smoke. He's still coming out this way. He's working down the flank to try to get, you know, map control down here for his team. Now, now take a look at where this position has put his shores. Look how far away his, it, it was, you know, 11 kilometer shots back in up here. N or, excuse me, I was back in over here. It was 11 kilometers. Now we're talking almost 15 kilometers for that shores to try to shoot me. And... That puts the odds much more in my favor, especially because these guys are still going to have roughly the same shot. So now I'm using my superior speed. I'm just going to run the Haida down. Now I do make a bit of a misplay here. As soon as he shot, I should have just smoked up because these guys here likely would be able to spot him. I didn't actually look to see if the Fiji had smoked up or not. Uh, that's why I just kind of was hanging out in the open. That's a bad aim shot by me right there. But, again, support makes makes a ton of difference when you're picking fights that 
you don't really want to uh you wouldn't typically want to to take powering now, off powering on mic on charging battery yeah thanks janet for letting me down again all right anyway so this Haida obviously made the mistake of over pursuing and that that ultimately cost him his ship um had he played that more passively this would have been a lot harder for me to deal with um eventually though this shores would have been would have eventually been forced out um with the battleship crossfire here he would he would he would either end up in a position where he's going to get less and less effective because you know with the fiji here that hide is not going to be able to push into the cap and uh you know we just take the cap and just push b and the shores are just sitting out here not really doing much of anything but since we got the Haida out of the way getting into torpedo positioning or torpedo boat positioning if you look I'm moving right in on these guys and I see this Ganaisa now Ganaisa now is a battleship that loves to brawl loves to get those torpedoes off and I see a Sinop that he's he's in a risky position in my opinion I'm not wild about this position but what I am trying to do with those torps, I'm launching them as, as far forward as I can into that island. I'm trying to cut that Gneisenau off from being able to YOLO my Sinop. And if you look at that, that's just a, a beautiful picture right there. He just turned right into him. Unfortunately, he only eats three. I did launch kind of an insurance set in behind him just in case he, he was only sort of faking at committing to, to try to bait torpedoes. And uh, you know because those insurance torpedoes, you know trying to cover those bases I wasn't able to pick the kill up there but I definitely did enough damage to the guys and now he's not interested in pushing right now. so. Switching my focus to the Sinop, if you look here, I'm going to pause it, take take a look at the island positions. Take, what options are available to this Sinop? So, realistically, take a look at the mini-map here. He can't really sail this way, because if he does, he's giving broadside to both Sinops. Um, he can, you know try to spin around and bow tank these two synops or he can also you know commit and kind of push in so those are the options that i'm dealing with now i've got three launchers on my destroyer so that gives me some tactical options about how i want to launch these torpedoes i can either go for something really tight that if i've if i've antis anticipated his his course correctly I can deal, you know, significant damage, or maybe dove strike him with uh, with that drop. Now here, I was just anticipating that he was actually going to just try to bow tank and just duel this Senop right here. He's got a Fiji to shoot at. Um, he starts reversing, so it's one of those things that, you know, I can tell that my my guess isn't. Uh, isn't as good as it it could have been but if you look at my positioning now their second synop is pushing down in here and my position here is it, it's one giant you know angle of crossfire to anything trying to push through here down into in between a and b it, it's just gonna be extremely nasty for anybody that has to try to make this turn if they want to push and notice the distances too I'm trying to get inside eight kilometers I want these torpedoes to arrive as quickly as possible here using those 
that three uh, those three launchers for some flexibility just led this guy as he was accelerating with one set of torps uh, wasn't anticipating him to go full speed because you know he's already pretty low and then this sent up looks like he was reversing so I put two two sets in here that may catch this guy if he goes full uh, accelerates fully and uh, may catch this guy if uh, he just keeps reversing and then again the torpedoes are on reload just gonna spin back a bit get a little bit of distance and uh, wait till things are spotted and I, I believe this time I am gonna smoke up and the reasons why I'm smoking up I want to try to finish this guy and I want this guy's now dead as well waiting for the smoke to actually cover my ship that's very important when you're low HP bit of a misplay here I should just be shooting the Gnizen out here because those torpedoes are gonna kill that uh, that sent up here we go going on working on the Gnizen now I'm a bit you know at the edge of my max range so I'm I'm scooting up closer to the edge of my my smoke maybe I, I can get um, you know that little uh, little bit extra range there unfortunately Sinop pops a plane I already was moving out of my smoke the plane didn't really last that long anyway but here I really wanted to launch these torpedoes but this is just I don't have voice communications with this guy so it's just really risky for me to do that and normally if I was more HP I would be shooting but because of that my HP situation you know I don't know when this guy's gonna get a repair off like he did so instead just drop a set of you know torps off you know under seven kilometers and I'm pretty confident this guy's gonna try to to push in towards a cap so got a fairly good guesstimate on where he's going and I honestly I don't need much to kill this guy and this this is the crossfire I'm talking about here the, all these battleships they've got an angle to all of my battleships down in here and that leaves them wide open for me pick up that synop now the enemy Ganiza now he's he's reversing this guy's kinda had a rough game from uh, um, from all of my torpedoes early on again I'm just waiting to see what this guy's gonna do waiting for my smoke he gets down low enough I am gonna risk it to take the shot and my Fiji is able to put him down uh, my shot probably would have killed him as well um, but there we go now we've cleaned up everything in the south um, just a, a nasty nasty crossfire down there as soon as that DD was killed we were able to um, I was able to take that position and and just kind of operate you know just you know just for the the damage dealing position rather than actually worry about a cap itself um, may, partially because my Fiji had already capped it but um, also because really it was touch and go down there with uh, a few of my ships that that could have gone you know very different had my torpedoes not been into play that guy's now probably would have yoloed that sent up right out of the gate and we would have been down that battleship um, a lot sooner than we we other otherwise were now if you're wondering what I'm doing here um, I, I let the team know I was pushing a B cap and I uh, believe my Fiji told me to get back and he was pinging back up here which I interpreted as the New Orleans is back over here somewhere um, so I decide 
I'm going to take a, a little bit safer route. Maybe I, if uh, the New Orleans is sitting over here somewhere, I'll be able to spot him before he spots me. Now, now that the New Orleans does get spotted, everything spotted on the on the uh, on the board now. I'm just going to push right in here, and my objective, aside from capping B, is just make sure that these guys cannot go dark. And uh, if they can't go dark. That means my team gets to shoot at him constantly. Trying to use my torpedoes here, just want to deny that area behind that island he's trying to use right now. Since uh, he's got, I'm going behind an island, I go on ahead, I take that shot. But because also it's the last enemy ship left on the team. I'm going to push out here and just add my guns to the mix. And my team's able to put him down. So again, this, this was just a, a really good game as far as, you know, dealing with a, uh, a Haida. The big one, if you can if you can catch a Haida when his smoke's on cooldown, he's a lot more vulnerable. Uh, specifically, the gun configuration. If you watch my Haida videos, uh, particularly the early, my first Haida video, I go over some of the gun angles and stuff. Haida has some really terrible gun angles when it comes to kiting away. If the Haida doesn't have smoke that he can use and you're somewhat close to support, He's not going to be able to, you know, to push you. He's going to have to try to fight that kiting away, which Haida also has really slow firing or slow arcing shells. They take a long time to arrive on target. So once you get outside eight kilometers, Haida's DPM really starts to, to drop down. Whereas um, maybe a, a Russian destroyer, well, especially a Russian, a French destroyer, even the Japanese torpedo boats, your guns still have a little bit more pep in that 8 to 9 kilometer range where you should be able to deal more damage to the Haida than he can you. Um, but also, every time the Haida has to, uh, you know, turn, he's got to turn out and show a lot of broadside to shoot you. If you looked, he was almost broadside to me when he was shooting at me, whereas my my angle to him was a lot sharper um that's that's one of the limitations on the boat so when you're fighting them uh, be patient that smoke will 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 go on cool down soon and then you have roughly a minute to kind of get aggressive push that haida and uh you know force him into a fight that he might not want now if the haida is playing passive and is close to support you got to kill that support ship first, either with, you know, your torpedoes, get them spotted for your battleships to take care of them, that kind of thing. Don't don't just let that support ship sit behind an island and uh, bang away at, at your, your battleships or something like that. That's exactly what that Shores was looking to do. That's why I was sitting out that far from the cap, uh, just to, to deny that Shores the concealment to just blind fire my team so uh, last part of the video torpedo boat positioning uh, I've went over that a bunch of times in videos this is just a, a newer edition of it so if you guys have any questions or comments leave them below hope you're having a good night and I will talk to you later